Howdy, man. Just passing by. You got any work for a hungry traveler? You'd have to talk to Mr. Reagan about that. Take a seat on the porch and I'll fetch you a bite. Kind of you. Can I fetch you a load of wood or some such? Wood's on the side of the house. I'd like to speak to the man of the house about some work. He's just out in the field. Should be coming in soon. You can take your pie under the porch. Here! Never make it squat. But I'm pregnant. did want me to give up the badge. I guess you got your way. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. The baby lost to us over a year ago. And now too. I likely won't be back here again. Maybe I'll be joining you real soon. God is my witness. I'll send those that hurt you straight to hell. to scare her off so that her knot-headed old man would follow her. But no, no, truth is you're the peck ahead. I told you, Mr. Braddock, it was Skunk that did the dirty deed. Tracker and I was just shaming the woman. She looked like a breed to us. She gave him a knee, he jerked her Take, up. Get the hell off of my table. He's just full of shit. Hell. She was still blowing blood when we rode out. Damn, you, you poked a senseless woman. A pregnant, senseless woman. 
who was far along with a child. Ain't that right? She weren't so fat. Ain't that the truth, you stupid fool? Damn. Now, did you leave anything that could lead it all back to the Triple R? We left nothing but tracks. Of course, they knowed we was in that part of the country. But now how the hell did they know that you was there? You don't think Skunk and Tall Horse being that close to Bighorn with a week's pay in their trousers would down some whiskey? We stopped at Pauline's Palace. Oh, geez. Why the hell didn't you just walk into the sheriff's office and say, hey, we poked your pregnant wife and banged her brains out? Damn these flies. <laughs> I'm surrounded by bloody balls for brains imbeciles. Just three. Young Michael stayed outside. He still ain't talked to any of us. And for good reason. For good reason. Did you, did you at least put the fear of God into that young Michael? Did. Hell, boss, you said to rough her up. Yeah, rough her up. Make her want to run for it out of the country. Not bash her brains to march you not head. Now get the hell out of here. If that sheriff don't ride in here with a hundred men, I'll be surprised. Ain't no hundred men, Bighorn. He shows his face, he'll be buying the place for taxes. Dead men don't pay no taxes. Now get out of here. Hong! Send Hong up here. Hong, I want you to go down to Bighorn. No, I want you to go down to Bighorn. And, uh, see, uh, see if you can get some supplies. Uh... No need to support. But then make up some supplies. But I want you to just go talk to like that uh, engine woman. What's her name? Lily. Go well, talk to Lily. Uh, any other celestials that are around there, but see if you can find out if there's any talk about that poor Mrs. Reagan who passed away. Yes, boss. And also, you stop by Mrs. McLaughlin's. See if she has any needs. And if she does, then you fetch them. Bring them back on your way back, okay? And make sure you put it on the ranch account. Okay. And you hot foot it back here, all right? What are you waiting for? Get out of here. Go. Yes, boss. Let not the swift flee away, nor the mighty man escape. They shall stumble and fall toward the north by the river Euphrates. Thanks, y'all, for coming. Let's see y'all here next Sunday. Quint, how you doing? Well, with Consuela only a few days in the ground and her murderer is still hooting and hollering not too damn well. Murderers? You, more than one? At least four by the track. Now, I lost them on the road to town, and then there's the head of the snake. To town? You don't think town folks were involved. Yes, sir. I've been a lawman for a long time, and folks that jump to conclusions often jump over the truth. Now, I don't come to any judgment until the high water recedes and all can be seen. Quint, I thought it was a beautiful service. There's nothing beautiful about burying your wife and unborn child, Ian, no matter how pretty the palaver. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean... No offense taken. Why don't you mount up, ride back out to quiet waters, and, and pray over Consuelo's grave. Pauline over at the palace tells me there were four in her place, unusual quiet and looking over their shoulders. And Spike Howard's the only one she could paste a name on. He's the, the ramrod of the Triple R, as you damn well know. And then there was big Indian among them and some wet behind the ears kid. You, you, you can't believe what that Jezebel says. Man may tell more with pillow talk than pew or pastor talk Ian. Let's, let's pray over it. Um, I'm putting praying on the fence post for a while, pastor. Where I'm going and what I aim to do, even the good Lord doesn't want to bear witness. You're conjuring up things you just don't know. You got to believe your eyes, Ian. Got to believe your eyes. I sold the herd. I gave the mayor my power of attorney to sell the ranch to anybody other than the Triple R. He's to give the proceeds to you if I'm not around in a month or so. Stay away from the Triple R and you will be around. <laughs> you keep 10% to yourself. Build that new church and school you've been rattling on about with the rest. I got plenty from the sale of the herd. 
I don't rattle, and I'd way rather have you around pounding nails alongside me. I'll be pounding all right. I'll be pounding crosses with the same carving on each. Coward needed killing. Should I take time to bury the bastards? You don't know who those miscreants are. You know as well as I do. And I'll get the who out of one of his fence riders as soon as I get past the open range, and then I'll get every name. Leave the badge on and bring them in legal. And have Braddock buy off half the town and have them go free. Typical this time, Ian. Eye for an eye. And I'm not hiding behind a chunk of copper. It's not near big enough to cover my anger. If you ride into the Triple R against a hundred riding for the brand, they'll kill you. How many of those collars you own? Three or four. I'm trading you all that stuff at my place for that one right there. You, you taking up preaching? Not to worry. Strip it off, you care to oblige. No time, no time! Come on, come on. Mm, thank you. Mr. Braddock wanna know you need from town. Oh, thank you, Mr. Hong. Thank Mr. Braddock for me. But we have no money to spare for store-bought goods. Mr. Braddock say, hey, pay. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Hong. But no thank you. Mr. Braddock's kindness comes too dear. So, no what? No wants, no need. He pays us a fair wage and we want for a little. Mr. Hong, you had it a big horn? Hmm. Can I ride along, ma? Betty <laughs> like the company. No, Mr. McLaughlin. The man of the house is needed here. I don't fancy a loan for even a night. How about Mr. Hong bringing a bag of hard candy? <laughs> <laughs> Make some hits to China. We will ask him to bring some from there. Uh, no. No go China, Mrs. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Travel safely, Mr. Hong. You pass by lunch or supper time, and I always got a bowl of stew, or otherwise a cool drink. Be late time. You can stall the meals in the barn if too tired to go on. You kind of lady, but I sleep on the load. Meals go home, no matter time. Oh. Well, bye bye. Pa always said pride goes before fall. Pa didn't want what Mr. Braddock wants from me. What the heck you gotta give a rich man like Braddock and the Triple R? Mr. Braddock is kind enough to let us stay on here after Pa died. For that, he gets a big thank you and a small piece of heaven. What you gotta give? What I can or can't give him is nothing that concerns you, young man. Unless you're a magic man, that stack of firewood won't shrink to stove wood on its own. Yes, ma'am. But I still... Ask me when you turn 18. So, Miss Lily, what happened to Sherry's wife? She died. I know die. Who may die? Who wanna know? You know who I know. You know who may die. I know I'll go on in big horn. So, tell. One dollar. <sighs> two bits. Then two bits I'll get. You Indian pirate. <laughs> ah, so sheriff leave job. He tell preacher. He, he go find killers. He go, well, all cow. Smash up barn, smash up house, give rest to church. And he ride off with his white horse, black pack mill, and cow dog. You tell me, mister, who you think Sheriff want to talk to. Yeah, you made good time. On the full ridge, what time did you come in? One hour before sun, right hard. 
Now rest. Really? Well, listen, you just spit out what you learned, and then you go get a couple hours. Should I? Because you're going to have to make lunch. Had to pay a dollar? A dollar. Well, you just tell the paymaster. Tell him to. I said put it on your income, your earnings, right? Your earnings. All right. So, spit it out. What'd you learn? He come. White house. Black mule. Cow dog. Was he alone? White house. Black mule. Oh, that's not what I'm talking about. You know it. Now, for more people, was there any men with him? No one know if more come. Really? My guess alone. He rode along. He rode along? Yeah. Must be. Crazy loco. Just plain crazy. Sure. Crazy. Bust up house and burn. Give out church. Ranch for sale. Well, maybe there's something good about this. No, it's not good. Why the hell not? No sale, break duck. No sale, trip R. Can he do that? Hell, you wouldn't know. Well, check it out with one of those crooked attorneys down in Bozeman. What'd you do? Who got the dollar? Miss Lily at the laundry. Miss Lily? Yeah. You didn't get a poke out of that, did you? Because I ain't paying for no poke. Miss Lily cut a whole throat. Hong ask. I want riders out to all the log camps. Every rider Triple R brand, eyes out. On the watch for that. Ex Sheriff Quinn Reagan. I want him shot down like a trespasser. And ten ten dollar gold pieces to the man who does. And I don't want him to set eyes on this house. That go for me too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and hell. You hung Wranglers. Blacksmith, hostlers, and hell. Your wives, whores, laundry women, if any. Just so he doesn't get this far. Just tell them, keep their eyes open. Keep their shooters loaded and don't chit-chat, just shoot. My hot damn gut shooting pleasure, boss. Don't even think about it. What the hell? You couldn't find a heifer to butcher? A heifer wouldn't hurt Braddock near as bad as a thousand dollar bull. Why do you want to hurt the Triple R so bad? I'll ask the questions. About a week and a half ago, four riders came off the Triple R. I want to know their name. And the next one's going to take your manhood. And you'll sing a little higher if you don't bleed out before you can squeak. Hold on, mister. I didn't do you any harm. I said names, and I ain't going to ask again. Spike Howard. He rode out with Skunk Tobias in a big Indian named Tall Horse or some damn thing. And, and a kid. Kid's name was Mike, Michael. Michael, that was his name. 
take off that gun belt and put it on the ground. And what's your name, Mr. Choir Boy? I want to know your name so I can put it in my do not kill unless necessary column. It's Patches, Patches Old Dugan. Say, aren't you the sheriff from Bighorn? But I don't see no badge. No badge. You can call me Abe Lincoln or Ulysses S. Grant if you want to. Now, how do I recognize those four men? Spike, big, heavy, uh, beard. Then there's that tall horse dude. Black hat, red shirt, braids. And the kid, he just, he just yabbers all the time. Well, I heard it. He was holding the horses outside when it all happened. He hasn't talked to anybody since. Well, then you best head on out. What the hell? Come on in. What is it? I'm Patches. Patches or Dugan. I ride the south sections for you, boss. Good for you. What? The bull? Hercules? Somebody shot him. Shot him dead. Shot Hercules? Yes, sir. Oh, damn the bastards. Who the hell would do that? We cut fences and we got stock all over hell and gone. Oh, jeez. So, did you fix the fence? Well, no, sir. No. I didn't think. No, sir. Now we got a hundred head. All the hell over the place. So, all right. Well, you get the hell out of here. Damn. I saw him. What? Who? Him who shot your bull. Maybe you tell me who. I'll let you stay till after chow in the morning. Well, maybe two weeks bonus. Should I remember? How about I have home? Serve your parts to the hogs, should you not remember. He was that sheriff, the sheriff from uh, Bighorn. Said his name was Abe Lincoln or Les's Grant, but I knowed better. You knowed better? How'd you know better? Maybe because old Abe was hobnailed dead and surrounded by imbeciles. Or maybe you just in your chat with this fella, you know, who didn't know the difference between buffalo and uh, a bald face bull. Is that, is that how it went? Is that what well, you did? Well, yeah. Uh, well, 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 well. Uh, you got 10 minutes to get the hell off of this place. Now get. I'll need some more time with this limp. Uh, 10 minutes. I'm going to be at the window with my rifle. You gimp. You old fart. Hong, where the hell are you? Hong! Hong! Hold up, young man. Where's your paw? My paw ain't your business. You got any triple R hands about? She's over yonder. Nice move, ma'am. But if you pull off on that thing, you'll cut us both in half. You turn us on loose. What's your business? This is Triple R land. Braddock know that you're homesteading here? I ask, who are you? I ride for the Triple R. And we work for the Triple R. Well, hell. Pardon me, I'm sorry to trouble you. You sure you don't have any Triple R hands coming for supper? Not for a week. They're running over on the east side, but you never know. Well, then what say we lay down our arms? What's your name, mister? Uh, Sam. Uh, Sam Jones. I'm new to the place. Obviously. We're about to partake of some venison stew. Where's your mount? Over yonder in the woods. Looks like rain tonight. If you don't mind, uh... You like to bed down in your barn. I will have Tommy fetch a bowl and some bread out. Much obliged. I want you to take Boldy and Scroggins with you. Go catch up with Patches. He was headed out south. And I'm take you to where Hercules was shot and pick up the trail there. And then you trap that son of a bitch down. No palaver. You shoot him like a rabid dog. Well, Baldy's still at Alder Creek Camp making one more pass for Mavericks. Forget it. 
Yeah, engine, come here. You all have a vested interest in this. All you boys. All four of you. I want you to try to clean this up. All right? What vested interest? Never mind. It was killer crazy skunk, not me. All right, you're not familiar with the word accessory. But let me tell you something. Anybody who is near the man that banged her head against the wall is guilty. That means all four of you. Guilty. Michael, boy, stay outside. Now, he was there. Don't make a hoot. No palaver. Track down. Shoot down. All right. Remember, white horse, black mule, cow dog. Don't go shoot no pilgrim or something. All right? We don't need the trouble. Come here. Now, I want you to get to every camp and tell them about the bounty. Any man who brings me Quint Reagan or his head collects. Yes, boss. What are you looking at? I understand, boss. Yeah, yeah. Get the hell out of here. Go on. sent me out. Breakfast coming out of the oven. You're to wash up and come in. I am, eh? Well, sure. That's the best offer I've had all morning. Only one is usual the best one. Does you need anything? You could, uh, split a little wood. Axe is over there. Is Mr. Jones coming in? He wanted to chop some wood first. Oh, why? That's so kind of him. Go fetch him in. He said he'd come in when he had an arm load. I will keep things warm. I'll go take care of his doll till he finishes up. You do that. Mr. Jones, breakfast on the table. Tommy said biscuits, not a feast. I hate to be rude, but if we could say the blessing, I, I gotta make tracks. Tommy was enjoying your company. Supper blessing only in this household. Not that we don't thank him for all of our bounty. Well, let's dig in. How about you doing the honor some supper time? I don't believe I've got his ear. Ma'am, where's the next line camp? Four miles due west, where Big Alder Creek comes out of the Little Belt Mountains. How many hands bunk there? Mr. Jones, for a triple R hand, you don't know much about the ranch. I'm a, a new hand, remember? Thanks for the fine fixings. Don't be too complimentary, sir. I will build Mr. Braddock. Could we have a dozen riders? Could be none. Well, I'll see you in the next fence go round then. here many hour ago. Camp now. Leave early. Easy trek. Mule and dog with him. How do you know all that? See here. That trek. Two big coyote. Two small wolf.
Go get wood, dumb white eye. Storm coming. Kidding, old girl. I need you to watch my back and stay. <clears throat> my wife says, Howdy. Ride back of barn. Check white horse and mule. Yeah. Too late for chow. I got some of Norvin's hard bread and can heat up some stew while you all wash up. Much obliged. Thought most y'all were branding. Mm -mm. We're, we're on the hunt. Hunt? Yo, look. The skin is high. No. Who got killed? Hercules. Hercules? Hercules the bull? That's right. You ever been over to Bighorn? No. So it was Sheriff there, Quint Reagan, riding a white horse, dragging a black mule, fair sized cow dog. You see him, keep the door barred and that double in hand. He ain't a lawman no more. Mm. He's an outlaw man. Stone cold killer. Fact is, you shoot him down, hundred dollar gold coin is yours. Medium sized cow dog. Trek said, "Come here." Mule and dog track and barn. I hope some bull killing murderer wasn't peeking in their windows. Trek said, "Come here." Well, thank the good Lord, he kept on riding. He must have hit her in the barn. More coffee? When's that stew gonna be ready, man? Soon. All right, we're mighty hungry. Maybe something else. Well, make sure the killer's not around before you ride on. Rest assured, man. We're here to protect you. Fine meal, man. Oblige. Hope we pass this way again soon. Fine looking woman like yourself. And good cook, besides. Ma, why didn't you tell him? We don't know all that is going on, Tommy. Right hard. Told her to smell blood. Well, maybe we'll get some answers here. Come on, friend. Let's go spread the good word. Hello, the wagon. Oh, howdy. Pastor? Oh, sit a spell. Well, the good Lord would smite a man wouldn't accept good hospitality. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, I suppose that is a fact. 
Well, Father, bless this generous soul. May his spirit be an hour inside of St. Peter's Gate before the devil knows he's there. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you've, been, uh, you've been from the old country, huh? Generation back. Well, how long you been spreading the word? As long as I can remember. I'm John Lawrence from the Spread the Word Gospel Wonderman Church. Pleased to make your howdy. Oh, yours too, Pastor. Yours too. A few miles back, I met a nice lady and her son. Uh, they the owners of the place? Oh, Lord, no, Pastor. Lord, no. <laughs> Bradford Braddock. Got a home larger than a territorial governor. Over about 25 miles yonder. So this, uh, this Triple R, is it a good God-fearing place to work? Well, my ma, bless her soul, said never lie, particularly to a man of the cloth. She also said, you ain't got nothing to say nice about someone. Don't say nothing at all. Well, I guess that about explains that. Well, this lady, uh, Lola, I think her name was. Why would she stay in the employ of a man like Braddock then? Well, they, uh, Mrs. McLaughlin and her husband Rafe and the boy Tommy, they, uh, they came out all the way from, um, Cairo, Illinois, headed to the Mullen Road and on to Oregon, before they broke down, uh, just near the Yellowstone. Well, the husband went out looking for help, and, uh, well, let's just say the crow helped themselves to his hair. Well, some Triple R riders came, found the woman and the boy, and brought them back in. And Brother took a shine to them. Got her a job at the home place. <laughs> then he tried to take more than just a shine. This, uh, Braddock. He offered his hand? Eh, seems like he had a wife run off back east some time ago, and everyone knew it, including Miss McLaughlin, and, uh, she ain't the type to live in sin, <laughs> even if she fell for that old lech. God bless her. You've been fine company, but uh, I best be moving on. See ya. Any of them uh, Crow Indians still about? Well, you're headed to Blackfeet country, but uh, <laughs> well, hell, preacher, be scalped by one as much as the other. <laughs> Any of them uh, Triple R riders still around? Uh, a couple rode out before sunup. They headed east. Well, thank you for the fine conversation. You earned yourself a little piece of heaven. <laughs> well, thank you, preacher. Thank you. Well, well. Looks like I might be paying Oscar a hundred dollars in gold, huh? Ain't right, Mr. Braddock. <laughs> what ain't right? You putting a price on the sheriff's head after what the boy's done to his wife. Ooh, you open your mouth about that again, and I'm going to have dirt thrown in your face. Now you get over to the remuda and break some stock. Yes, sir. Now, what you got there, Cookie? Skunk Tobias had himself an accident. Oh, hell. The wind was blowing. We figured it blew the privy over. <sighs> Early it was. Maybe his peepers weren't focused in yet. Yeah. Bullshit. No, sir. We roped him by his ankles and jerked him out. Filthy job, that. Well, what the hell you bring him all the way to hell here for? He was number three around here, we figured. You cleaned him up, I hope. We drug him through the creek before we wrapped him. Yeah. All right, we'll unwrap him. Did I hear you say he went headfirst into the privy? You did. It must have been a big old rock down there, because it has been bashed pretty good. Did anybody see him fall in? No, sir. We was all at the house. Yeah. You dumb bastard. Somebody cracked his skull open and then dropped him in to drown. We didn't see nothing around here. Did you look for any sign? No, sir. We thought it was an accident. Yeah. Well, 
or somebody want to fill this peck ahead in on that Reagan fella, and y'all pay attention. Unless you want to end up smelling like the south end of a northbound skunk. No, sir. Now, I gotta write some letters. You take this stinking mess, go bury it far out. Nowhere's near any family plots. Yes, sir. Stupid. I should have hung him from a tree for the buzzards. So stupid to drown in other people's leavings. <laughs> What? Here's Shod. Where? Over a hill. Go slow now. Well, hell, I must be tired. I haven't missed a shot like that since Methuselah was a pup. No worries, you hit him. Hit him real good. It'll be easy to find now. Oh. Oh. He's hit, but he's still moving. He may be hunkering down, waiting for a clear shot. Ain't no need to press it. Let him lay down. Stiffen up. Likely some bitch gonna bleed out anyway. Then you back to camp. I take hundred gold all for me. That weren't what I meant. I'm with you. Just don't push it. Damn near dead dark. You ain't gonna get far. We'll find him stiff and cold in the morning like gutshot pig. Camp now. Ah, I've got to plug this hole. Some heart attack. You want some bacon and beans? No. Want ten gold piece. You mean five gold piece? No. Settle up. Where the hell are you, buddy? This can't end here. I ain't done yet. Oh, buddy. Come here, pal. Come here, friend. Go get, go get buddy. Hell, maybe he didn't hit him so hard after all. You not stop, not cold dead yet. But hit hard, plenty blood. Let's get this done. I lead too long, you know. <laughs> I ain't the tracker. Blind man, track here. Let's flip a coin. Heads, you lose. You cheat. I don't never cheat. Yeah, and Custer won. I lead too long. You lead or you die now. All right. 
Ranger. I hope you're getting buddy. You, you ain't one of them. It's too bad for you. I don't like being shot. <laughs>
take scalp. After he shot Scroggins? Scroggins, damn fool. You swear? Hmm. Still and all, we ought to run out up there. Hell no, we not paid enough. Scalps probably dragged behind a Lakota pony till the skin rubbed Lakota off. Lakota bull. They're all on the res. Not all. Tall horse ought to know he says Lakota. So where's the body? No body, but it... Uh, but. And no hundred dollars. Well, that ain't right, boss. What ain't right is you yellow bellies kowtowing to a few red men. I drove a thousand of them off this basin to build this ranch. Now you get the hell back to work. Because we'll find them. Half of you no accounts are going to be diving for brown apples in the privies. He's dead as a shoe nail. I'd bet my last you dollar. You bet your last dollar every payday at the end of the day on whores and whiskey. So it ain't saying much. Now, you go out there and you get three or four more men and tall horse for sure. And you make a round to all those line camps and see if anybody saw that low life son of a bitch. Don't forget to go check on Mr. McLaughlin and Tommy. But make sure, and I mean sure, that Reagan is feeding the worms. All right, come on. Can I help you? You're gonna have to come back later if you're looking for food. Oh, I'm just checking to see if you're doing all right. Mr. Braddock wanted me checking up. We're fine. What's the trouble? I got biscuits in the oven for Tommy and I. Black mule and barn. Quiet water is back bet. You harboring that murdering some bitch? I found that mule. He was eating up our garden. Finders keepers, don't you know? that true? First of all, I don't lie, Mr. Howard. Second, control your language around this Christian house. I will be more than happy to take your outlandish behavior out with Mr. Braddock. So you continue to insult us. Now leave. We're gonna make this our last stop coming back. I don't trust that farmer's widow. Brad's blinded by her pretty. Mr. Reagan, I'm sure it is. Don't you think it's time for you to fess up? Yes, sir, but may I explain? Please, you made a liar out of my son. You, you lied too, Ma. No, sir. All I said, I don't lie and I don't. Mr. Reagan, what brings you to the triple R? I owe you, ma'am, and you've done me a great kindness, a great risk to yourself. And I'll tell you the story, but then I have to leave. It's too risky for you and Tommy. And please, just, just call me Quint. You can stay tonight, but if you can ride tomorrow, where will you go? I've got a friend in the mountains, and he'll take care of me. We have not seen the last of Spike Howard in that tracker. I will have Tommy ride along at least to the foot of the little belts. Now tell me, am I mistaken in helping you? <laughs> you remind me of my... Say, Tommy, how about you go fetch my mule? Yes, sir. You've gone out of your way and you deserve to know. My wife was home alone, unless you consider the baby inside of her. And 
She was only six months along. There were and four riders by the track, and I found her head bloodied. Forgive me, her, her thighs bloodied as well. And then I buried her, and I will have my revenge. And you think it was a triple R? I know it was, and who did it, and who sent him to do the job. Tommy, your mom was worried sick even before we left. I think it's time for you to get back. You sure you'll be all right? I got a lot of work to do, but I ain't dying before it's done. I'll take care of Ranger, should anything bad happen to you. God, I know you may not agree, but I'm not through. Feel half dead, but I'm alive. Bad men. Very bad men. I saw you chasing them. Are they dead? You kill one white eye. Bad medicine. Crow dog right off. Think I'm any Lakota. Yeah. Please stay clear of it. This is my job alone to do. Thanks for taking me in. Why are you on Warpath? My wife is dead. White man sickness? No, two hatchets. Men. Men from the Triple R. You need friend. Triple R, many riders. No, sir. This is all on me. When you well? Well, I buried her in the dress your wife gave her. She loved that dress. My woman, good woman. She in spirit world. Your woman, good woman. She in spirit world. She feed us when we're hungry. She take care of two hatchets when Billy hurt. Stay till well. Two moons or more. Two months? No. Oh. Too long. Two weeks, maybe. One half moon. Fine horse, your mark, with two hatchets horse. Mule, too, staked in meadow. You find my dog, Ranger. Outside, chew elk bone. Good old friend. And I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> Came as soon as I got your letter, Brad. It's pure pleasure having Miss McLaughlin joining us. It's Mrs. Judge. Although now a widow. She and her son came up here because we're gonna make a new agreement. I need the farmhouse that she's staying in. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see if we can't agree and maybe uh, she and her son are coming up here and moving into the big house with everybody. Now, we'll get back to that in a minute, but. In the meantime, I'm here to help. Ask me anything. Seems he gave the right to sell his little ranch to the Bighorn Mayor. But not to me. And not to the Triple R. Seems to me, since I've uh, issued a warrant for this Reagan, grand theft for shooting your bull, murder for a couple of your hands, although all this could be mute, seeing how rumor is, Reagan is dead. Were there witnesses to these murders? Oh, Lord. I'm trying to get some help from the judge. Why don't you just enjoy your meal and let the men talk? Now, my men will testify. You know that. The fact he was 
shot and killed after he murdered my two triple R hands. And unfortunately, a band of savages, they came and got him. So yes, he's dead, but there's no body. You know, probably uh, roasted skin and supper for some scavengers. Proof enough, I'll jerk that mayor's chain down at Bighorn. But I'll tell you what, how about I act on your behalf for say, 10%? Place less seat to the territory. Governor will appoint me custodian should I petition him. I'll serve the mayor and the new sheriff, Bighorn. Get all that paperwork started. Should have a deed for you by the end of the year. That's a fine idea, Lord. A fine idea. Yeah. Now, just one, one other detail. I, my wife left there at the ranch about seven years ago and tried to reach her, but to no avail. I want a declaration put together to declare her deceased. Because of a possible estate issue? No, because I want to ask Lola for her hand. We should have discussed this. I will let you gentlemen talk. I'm gonna find Tommy and retire to our room. Good night, judge. Seems unity commits the lady first. Like many, all Lola has is a pride. She has no money. She has nowhere else to go. She'll come around to my way of thinking. You'll see. Now, what about that declaration? <laughs> um. Before breakfast, I'm promised me hotcakes and berry syrup. Hurry, I want to avoid Mr. Braddock. Yes, ma'am. Where you off to, Lola? Um, thought it better we get back home. All your things are packed in that wagon right there. Would you have someone drive us and our things to Bighorn? This is a freight company, Lola. Tommy, go on up. Yes, ma'am. I have something to ask you. Anything. A passing stranger told me a tale about some woman being murdered around Bighorn. Did you or the Triple R have anything to do with this? So that's a no? I shouldn't have to answer that question. <sighs> Bloody woman. What the hell? Do you have a moment? For you? Anytime. But before my son and I start walking to Bighorn, Oregon. No, please. Don't try to make that walk, all right, Missy? Before we set out, maybe we could get to know each other at decent time? Where I come from, one court for at least a year. Four months, and then it's my hand or my boot. And we can go back to the cavern so things are proper? Then, uh, then it's only one month. You'll be moving back in, and there'll be no riding or wagon stock because you won't be needing it. We could even be married at Christmas time because by that time, I'll be sharing Mary Beth by decree. <laughs> Agreed? A month at the cabin, here in separate rooms. I will not have my son think me just another soiled dog. And I will not have people think I married one. You'll be for Sunday supper once a week, every week. And Tommy? And Tommy. But I will not spend the night. Tommy and I will return before dark. Uh, I have somebody bring you back before nightfall. Well, 
Hello, friend. It's time for me to leave. Need more strength. What I need is to put my wife's killers in the ground. That's the best medicine for me. I've seen her a thousand times in my mind. I need to put her to rest. Indians say trouble far away, no trouble at all. You're a wise old friend. But this trouble is not far away. It's right here with me every time I close my eyes. I won't rest till those men rot in hell. While you sleep, the Poto breeds here. Stop for rest. They follow buffalo, see triple R riders. Some work, some go post a ruin in fire water. They cross Mesa Trail, go crazy mountain trading post. How many? Many white eye work fence, two go post. The tracker, a uh, tall horse, was he with him? No, one boy and another. I do victory dance for you tonight. Well, hell, can't hurt. I don't know how to thank you, my friend. I moved camp. Lucky no army find me. You moved far away. Crazy mountains, maybe. Stay well, my friend. Damn, look. Fitting Sheriff Regan. Former right. Sheriff. Kippy! Is. You, younger. You, Michael? You're a ghost! Nope. But unless you keep that gun holstered and run for your horse, you'll be one before you suck another breath. Now you wait for me outside. If you got a gun in your hand, there'll be no talking. Understand? Younger, I believe the gentleman means it. I'd hot foot it if I was you. There are two Triple R brands outside. Who else rides for Braddock? So, Mr. Reagan, I, I just signed on. I don't know nothing about nothing, about nothing that happened four months ago. Sheriff. I'm no longer a sheriff. Mr. Reagan. I heard them gabbing, and that's the way I heard it. This younger fella. What's your name? D Raleigh Ingus. I suggest you climb on that triple R nag outside and head for Helen or parts west, or on south back down to Bozeman. You understand? Uh, yes, sir, but I don't want to steal some man's horse. I, I don't mean for Those horse even. Those fellas will testify. You rode off the ranch under duress. You leave it in the first town you come to with the sheriff. Uh, yes, sir, I'll, I'll do just that. Anybody else here got a bone to pick with me? I got a little something for you. You got the inclination and the dollar. That's kind of you, but I have neither. No offense. What the hell is it? One of the boys stopped in at the Crazy Mountain Trading Post. So? So I guess there was a bit of trouble there the day before yesterday. So, how does that concern us, not the Triple R? Young Michael and Raleigh McBean was in the middle of it. So, it concerns us. So what the hell happened? Well, Michael and Raleigh were told to ride anywhere except and back to the Triple R. Let me guess. Clint Reagan. 
back from the dead. You dumb bastard. Boss, last tall horse saw a bunch of screaming savages was riding down on him. How are we supposed As to know? I remember, I told you, go up there and make sure. Damn. It's about time for us to bring the critters down from the high country. We got a few more to brand. I'll bet he's in the little belt somewheres. Yeah, probably butchered another triple R beef. If he is up there, miserable toads go up there, he'll just pick you all off. I want you and Tracker to just go up there and bring me his head. On a spike, Spike. And if you don't, don't come back here. You understand? He ain't a ghost. We'll find him. You said we was about due to bring the McLaughlin woman back to the big house? A week. So? What? You ain't gonna like this, poor dad. I never believed she didn't hide him out. Bullshit. All right, take Tracker. Go over to Rocky Mountain Post and you talk to Hiram and his missus. See if we get a line on where that bastard went. He's become a boil on my butt and I want to kill him. You understand? Listen, it's $500 in gold. You bring me back his head. And if you can't, you better go 500 miles in the opposite direction. And don't come back here. Evening. Seems you had some trouble here the other night. Who was in the saloon with Reagan? We can't answer that. Re Reagan ran us to home before you headed into the saloon. Well, who was in the saloon? <laughs> Nobody's in there now. Geraldine and Maybelle were working, and they're working now. Well, best they fess up or you'll be hunting two new pin cushions. Pin cushions? What gets poked more than pin cushions? <laughs> <sighs> Stay here. They can pour their own whiskey and beer. And Cheetos, for sure. I'll not have you in the middle of any more trouble. I have no interest, Mr. Hogan, in chopping my own wood, mucking stalls, or emptying spittoons. Fetch us a whiskey. Only Mr. Hiram pours the drinks. Fetch it, or I'll pull this pistola, and we'll see how well you can bang. Next time I see you drunk as a toad, swimming in a beer keg, I'll dance all right on your ugly love, and I'll partner up with her. Here you go, privy mouth. Watch your bucket mouth, pin cushion. You ain't the Lord's gift to ladydom your own self there, dumb brat. Sit your ass down before I knock you down. We don't serve no Indians. Well then, take it away from him. We'll have us four tobacco pouches and two scalps before we leave. Now, tell us about Reagan running Triple R hands off. Time for supper. I'll tell Ma. Well, hold on, Tommy. Are you and your Ma alone? Yes, sir. I'll come back and stable your horse and mule. No, well, I'll tie him up here in the woods yonder. I don't want anybody to see him in your barn. And I'm only staying for a cup of coffee. Yes, sir. Well, I guess I am welcome. Braddock is forcing me to marry him. How can he force her? Quint, I don't have a dime to my name. He's taking our meals and we would have to walk. And if we tried, he would just write us down. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I've got money, I, I, I'll help you out. Do you have both a horse and meal? Yes, but I don't know if I can. Take us, take us with you. Maybe, um, 
maybe you'll be just leave us in Big Horn or anywhere, just so it's a way. Um, we can wear double on your meal. I have business to take care of here. Here on the Triple R. I hate what you're doing. I hate guns. I at least hate what, what they've done to this country. The Indian, the buffalo, the many men in the ground. Please, Quint, help us leave. Lola, man's only as good as his word. Even if he only gave that word to his dead wife and child. Here, here's $200. I'll leave you the mule, but I hate to think of you and Tommy traveling alone. Give me, give me two days. If I'm not back in two days, I head for Bighorn. Maybe you with us all the way to Oregon. Lola, I won't be worth anything if I don't finish this. How long can you stay? It's risky for you and Tommy if I stay. No. I want you to stay here with us. Spend the night inside here with us. Tommy sleeps, he sleeps in the loft. Never saw no rabbit hole a body could fall into. Well, it's, it's called fiction, Tommy. It's, it's not fact. It's supposed to make you laugh or, or cry or, or happy or even scared. <laughs> There's a fellow called Poe, Edgar, I think, and his fiction would send chills up your spine. All right, young man. Thank you, Mr. Reagan, for helping you. Now go upstairs and go to sleep. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Reagan. You bet. Good night, Ma. Good night, Mr. Reagan. Good night, Tommy. Should I uh, no. head out to the... No, sir. I have just a dollop of whiskey, a snake bite, of course. And I would like you to relax with me in front of the fire until Tommy goes to dreamland with Alice and the White Rabbit and the Mad Hatter. <laughs> you might be the mad one. Not much of a future left in this old cowboy. Then I guess we gotta live for today. I'm not a girl any longer, Quinn. I had a husband and a child and I want you to stay. If you continue on this quest, maybe a memory, maybe all I have. Well, I guess a mug of whiskey do me just fine. Plenty of smoke. Up making coffee or biscuit. Flapjack, maybe. Maybe. I'll ride for the front door. You ride around to the barn, make sure we don't have no guests. Mm. I'll check for White Horse. Make sure no Regan. Mr. Regan, do us the honor. I'm not sure that I've got his ear. He hears all. Father, thank you for this fine food and this good woman, your son, and for giving me the will and the time to finish my chore. Bless his house and those that made it a home. Amen. I'm not sure your chore is something he wanted to hear. <laughs> but thank you for the grace. To the closet. Lola McLaughlin, hungry man here. Who's trying to be my door down? What's your language, Mr. Howard? The wagon will be here soon to move us. I don't have enough. I packed everything. Horse crap. Wagon's not coming till tomorrow. You wouldn't be lying to a hungry triple R hand now, would you? I, I have to unlock this. It sticks sometimes. Hurry it up, woman. You need the weapon? You don't have to rob us of biscuits and coffee. You flea bitten former bitch. Nothing she could do. She was under the gun. Bullshit. Hey, you step back outside. Howard, I don't want a bloody lady's floor. Come on now, Reagan. This ain't necessary. We was just riding for the brand. Uh, Braddock wanted us to scare you off. 
It was a skunk that beat on your, your whore, I, your wife. You know, I'd ask you to say hello, but you ain't going where she's going. Oh, hell. Hell with you, Spike. Braddock save 500 for you. Figure a lot easier you being dead. Look, are you hurt? Oh, you got shot. It hit me in the holster, dent in my colt, but gave me a hell of a whack, but they didn't get me. Oh. You know, you're not only a good mother and a fine cook, but you're a fine shot as well. Oh, you, Mrs. McLaughlin. I do believe we know each other well enough for first names, do we not? Yes, ma'am, I believe we do, Lola. Can you stand? That cut needs my sewing basket. Is it too early for another drink of whiskey? <laughs> we will make an exception. Well, thank you, ma'am, I owe you again. Enough to pack up and head for Oregon? No, like I said, I wouldn't be fit to be around, and now I got a way to ride into Braddock's front door. <laughs> You're gonna borrow one of my gowns? <laughs> Anybody seen hide a hair? A spike? A tall horse? No, boss. Well, go see if there's a good hand around. Maybe, maybe Baldy or Peterson. Yes, boss. Go! Stop yes, staring boss. at me. Okay. I guess I don't know you quite well enough to call you a damn fool. Tell me. Go fetch me the Indian's force. Yes, sir. Lola, if I'm not back tomorrow by sundown. The wagon to come fetch us is due here tomorrow. I'll pass them on the way into town. They won't be coming. Innocent squint. Braddock's the only one left, you said. And I won't hurt them unless they beg for it. So if you're not back? There's over $700 in my mule's pack and a note to the mayor of Bighorn and my friend Pastor Ian McLean to give you and Tommy half the proceeds of the ranch and the rest goes to the church. But I want you to leave with us. And I want to, and God willing, I'll be back. But I owe my wife. And I can't live with myself until she's revenged. God willing, go and come back to us. From your lips to God's ears. Hey, boss. You want the tea, boss? No. Two whiskeys. Tall horse is back. No. Yes, boss. But Spike is still out there. Damn that rig. I do everything myself. Tall horse is never coming back. So, you're going engine on us now. Who invited you, Regan? Fact is, my wife's ghost asked me to call on you. See, I never met her. I never set eyes on her. You'll get a chance to meet her proper. That is, if she's nearby when St. Pat slams the gate in your face. You'll never get a hundred feet from here. A hundred feet from this house, there's a hundred men around here that want to taste your blood. And that might be close. But you're a few short of a hundred riders now. You won't get a chance to see what's happening once I finish my task. You wouldn't 
you should know, man. There's no honor in that. What the hell would you know about honor? And I don't see it, old man. I see a greedy, scum sucking pig. Bitch. You're Sorry. a lousy shot, too. Uh, uh, 10,000? You just winged me. 10,000. 10,000 dollars. What you're gonna do is bleed out. Now toss that gun over here and we'll talk. Yeah. Get up. Oh, I can't. I'm breathing too hard. My guts are poking out. Yeah. That sounds like a long, slow, painful death, Braddock. I was gonna light this place up. But that'd hurt too many innocents. And hell's come for you so many. Please. Please get help. I... 25,000 in gold in my safe. You can do your negotiations with the devil now. You'll never get away. Shoot the son of a bitch. Some of that bitch. I got no quarrel with you fellas. You're shooting me to pieces, but not before I get a couple more of you. The boss man's bled out and his guts are decorating the ground, and he ain't covering no more payroll. You want to die for a son of a bitch that condoned the murder of a wife and an unborn child? I'm rolling my uh, bedroll and riding out. I take a wagon, two mules. You all take whatever you want. You earned it working for the devil. You're a desperado, it's hard to settle down With one good woman and one good town I met you, you rocked my senses Shook my foundation, tore down the fences Follow me horses, run through my mind I'm leaving them behind Far away horses can carry me away Now that you're in my life I'm coming home, coming home to stay Was a wild mustache Running free as the wind No one could break me But I wouldn't be Something changed in me I let the loneliness die You opened up my heart And you made me feel alive Follow me horses Run through my mind Now that I found you I'm leaving them behind Can't carry me away Now that you're in my life I'm coming home I'm coming home to stay Run through my mind